I'm an ad guy, but don't blame me for online advertising. Interestingly enough, the person you really want to blame is Ben Franklin, the American icon who invented electricity, also invented advertising. The first print ad ever sold was his newspaper in 1729. Of course, then thankfully two centuries later, Al Gore shows up and brings us to the scourge of spam. Spam starts with this guy, Gary Turk, who's a marketing manager for Digital Electronic Corporation. He invited to a beer and pizza night to a bunch of developers to show off a new line of deck computers. Now, good old Gary was so flamed for this, we didn't see spam really again for two decades, which then brought two characters out of Arizona, Larry Cantor and Martha Siegel. Larry and Martha hired a programmer and discovered this thing called Usenet, and they decided to send 4,000 automated messages to Usenet promoting what is now called the green card scam. Basically an immigration scam to get people to hire them to go uh, get green cards. Well, that led ultimately to what we have today, which is 80% of all e emails sent, which calculates roughly 6 trillion spam emails a quarter. That's a lot of emails. Now, as a result of, of spam and everything else, there are other things going on at the same time. The godfather of banner ads. Daddy, where do they come from? They ultimately come from O'Reilly Media's Tim O'Reilly. He's actually very proud of the fact that he had a role in commercializing the web and advertising. His first website was the first website to include ads, Global News Navigator. Now, interestingly enough, th he did not think to include actual ads. He had text ads and other things and sponsors. The actual first banner ad goes to a very prominent, well-respected geek publication called Wired Magazine. Yes, Wired, and Wired Magazine, through their digital division, through this guy, guy I know actually, Andrew Anker, through Hot Wired, invented the first banner ad. You can see an example of it down below. As a result of that, there are 1.3 trillion banner ads displayed in the United States every quarter. Now, banner ads ultimately were the end all be all of advertising. One of the next things that emerged was keyword marketing. New York City's highfalutin, iPad smashing dude, Scott Heffernan, invented keyword marketing. He wanted, he was told by Sony, when he worked at Sony, to go buy the AOL keyword music. You actually couldn't buy keywords at that point in time. What he did is he bribed the developers by sending them a bunch of CD Walkmen. The developers got the Walkmen. They, put, they started running AOL ads without management knowing at, at the keyword AOL music. Now, interestingly enough, a, at, around the same time, there's no keyword marketing on search engines. Yahoo does get credit, poor, behold, and beaten down Yahoo did do something pretty dramatically important. They invented the concept of cost per click advertising. They had a hard time selling ads to people, this little tiny little ad at the top, because who knew the value of impressions back then when ads were shown? They figured out a way to cause to sell it to Procter & Gamble, and hey, if I click it and people go to a website, I get something. Now the problem is the most popular things people wanted to buy were porn ads. They wanted to target Playboy. Playboy got wind of this and said, hey, screw that crap. I'm gonna sue you for allowing to sell ads based on my copyright named uh, uh, Playboy. Now along the same time, this guy named Bill Gross, the founder of Idea Lab, said, hey, wait a second. Why don't I build a whole search engine run where people pay me to get listed? And I'll take that concept from Yahoo and build a whole search engine. That eventually became GoTo.net and became uh, Overture, which then Yahoo, Larry and Sergey, as they were desperately trying to figure out a business model for Google pre-IPO, they stole the idea and launched their own version of, of paid search ads. That boy, Bill, sued. These two guys, and as a result of Overture won a lawsuit against Google where they had to license a patent of Overtures, and Yahoo, interestingly enough, was the largest shareholder of Google pre-IPO. Not many people know that. Probably Yahoo's biggest financial success today. Now, interestingly enough, the pop-up ad, no one makes any claim on, in the history of advertising as to having invented that. I'm not surprised. The all roads do seem to lead, at least in the popularity, they didn't invent the, the HTML call behind to uh, open, open display a window, but we can all blame this company called Gator, it's okay to boo, but really blame yourselves because if you didn't download these free music apps, the pop-up never would have become popular, so blame yourselves. So we're all here to blame. But the way Gator used to work is Gator was an application on your machine. Gator didn't actually start showing a pop-up. They started looking at, scanning a website, looking at an ad, ripping out your ad as the website owner and sticking in their own. The New York Times got wind of this and didn't like it and sued. There's a lot of lawsuits in the history of online advertising. As a result of that, losing that lawsuit, Gator said, wait a second, screw taking the ads out, I'll just cover them up with pop ads. So that and lest behold, pop up ads have become the scourges we now love and behold. Gator begets a lot of other things in online advertising. Gator begets the modern toolbar, another downloadable piece of application that shows ads um, via paid search. Gator begets the eye blaster, the crazy animations that fly across the screen, no one, God knows how you figure out how to close them, the chasing X. Begets behavioral advertising firms, begets New York's own ad mail, the DSP and Exchange. And despite all these companies, all this lineage, we still cannot show the right ad to the right user on the right website. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>